Hello, today we're going to take a look at simple rigging in Maya for commercials and I've called it that because I'm going to demonstrate some various really super simple methods that I've used for commercials in years gone by. So you can see in the scene we will have this banana that jumps and then spins around and it has also a jiggle on it and the render that I produced looks something like this. So it's not it's not that interesting, but the techniques that I'm just going to show you really quick um, should enable you to animate objects, inanimate objects without too much effort and get you started. It might open, open you up to explore some new ways of working as well. That being said, this uh, methodology is probably the sort of thing you might do in a small company or if you're working completely solo for a commercial. If you do work in a big company, then they would obviously have proper riggers. So this is kind of, you know, a cowboy way of doing it, but it's not completely uncommon. All that being said, there will be timestamps in the description as well as a link to this scene will be available for download in the comments and description, I suppose. And I will also upload this for my patrons as well. So if there's any other questions you want to ask as well, I have uh, different tiers as well. All the tiers have a Q&A email service where you can ask me a CG or VFX question and I will send either a standard email back or I will do a screen recording much like this. Anyway, let's get started. So this banana here, I actually downloaded from TurboSquid. So this group I've got here, what I'm gonna do is I will hide that and I will start again. So with the scene download, you would get something like this. So you will have a banana project directory and in the assets folder, you get the OBJ, which I downloaded from TurboSquid. So this needs adjusting basically. So that's why I'm offering the scene as well. And then in the scenes directory, there would be a scene and in the source images, what came with the TurboSquid model was just this basic uh, banana uh, texture, which I just renamed and it looks something like that. So this model was probably created using photogrammetry with softwares such as um, Photofly or 123Catch. Although saying that, those companies probably don't exist anymore. So I'm that, I'm, it's not something I use. But anyway, um, okay, so I'm going to just drag and drop the banana from the assets folder into the scene. So this is what the banana looks like, it's pretty tiny. So this uh, one one cube by default is one centimeter. So I'm just going to roughly scale it up. I don't know how big a banana is, but uh, I think that'll be fine. It's about um, 20 centimeters. Okay. Um, so what I'll do is I'll freeze transform. So I've scaled it up. So now before we do any sort of basic rigging, we want to get rid of these scale uh, transformations. When you work in studios, if there are specific riggers there that um, they would also ask, that's what you do. Like if you're, if you end up creating assets for jobs as well, like you should make everything really clean and do it at the origin, just as we're doing now. Okay, for this animation, I'm gonna try and make it look like what I had here. So what I need to do is I'm gonna position this banana to be in the base state. Um, so I want it standing up basically. So I'll do minus, minus 90 in the Z. And I want to zero out the, the pivot there. So you can see it's in the wrong place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press insert on my keyboard. There is another hotkey for it, but I forgot what that was. And holding down V, you'll notice it's a snapping hotkey as well. This is snap to vertex. So I'm just gonna hold down V and then drag that there. Gonna roughly pick the center. The topology on this is very weird. That's another reason why I think it's photogrammetry type geometry. Okay, now that I've moved that, I need to freeze everything again. You see we've picked up all this history. So I'll hold down space bar, go to modify, freeze, then release. And what I'm going to do now is I have actually created a shader. Actually, I, I could leave that for the moment. Something about this model I did notice was the normals were incorrect. So the normals are the direction 
of the polygon faces. So I'm actually going to go to mesh and then unlock normals. Although maybe I should have left it until it broke, but it was basically half the model was black when I applied the shader. But anyway, moving forward, so we can start doing the rig, but what I'm going to do now is press Control and G. So I'll put the banana in a group. This will be our, um, I guess we call it translate underscore group. And above that, we could create another group. So this group could be used for animating the jump. So everything else, like the twist, we want to do inside here. And then we could have another group, so we could regroup this. And then this could just be called banana underscore group. So as you can see, we've already started to build some form of hierarchy. So we have the banana group where there would be no transformations. And then we would have this tran translate group. So what we could actually do is if we wanted to, we could change the pivot point of this translate group. So we could do the same thing as we did before. And we press insert and we could, you know, put it to the middle of the banana, press insert again to lock that in place. And then what you'll see is when I go to banana underscore geo, the pivot is at the bottom. So we haven't we haven't destroyed that. What we've done is we've created this Basically, it's like um, a null, like having a group above. So we can we can animate that all fine, like rotate that around. And you'll notice the banana pivot point is still there. So we could do animation on top of animation. But by using different groups, what we could also do is we could create another group above that. So um, so we could have the translate group and we could also select, uh, so I'm selecting rotate X and then shift left clicking to rotate Z and I right click that and lock. And what we could do is we could create another group above that. It seems quite excessive, but then what, then this group on the top, what we could do is we can select all the translates and then right click and lock. And then we could call this rotate underscore group. So you could do this as a way of trying to, to preserve and basically not, not break your scene. Um, you, it's kind of a rudimentary way of what actual professional riggers do where they, they will lock things out. So you'll see in the rotate group, I'm pressing W, which is the hotkey for translate. But you can see here it's locked out and it's grayed out here, so I can't, all I could do is rotate. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Right, now for the banana geo, what I'm going to do is I'll save this scene now. And the first deformer we're going to add is these uh, these deformers that I'm adding um, are just non-linear ones. Out of all these different things, so you have a lot of different options, they could be used for different things. Some of them might just be used for modeling. Um, previously, I've used blend shapes, clusters, blend shapes, um, some animators use that for uh, lip syncing, that sort of thing. Clusters can be good, but I haven't used them for years, but they can kind of be rudimentary rigs for uh, inanimate objects. For example, if I right click on the banana, go to vertex, hold space bar, go to deform, cluster, now we have this cluster hang handle and you see and then you would have to change the weighting of this so this is where that becomes more like rigging but for our purpose that's too that's um that's too much effort basically <laughs> so let's go to uh, non-linear and then we want to bend so just default now what we want to do is this is where, this is the line in which the bend will occur. So with the bend handle selected, I'm just going to shift it to be straight as possible with the banana. So I'm going to look in a different camera, check the wireframe. Okay. I think that's fine. Um, so nothing has happened. So on the input, on the right hand side, we need to select bend. And then 
when we click curvature, I can hold down my middle middle mouse button and move to the right or left. And that will start to, to bend. So this is a way that you can actually make wheels as well. I think I already have a wheel tutorial, um, make your tire, sorry. So you can create a pattern and then basically use a bend deformer to you know duplicate the pattern 100 times and then bend it around. Okay, so this, uh, this bend, before we do anything with it, I need to put inside this translate group. So it means whenever we do anything, so whenever we animate, you'll notice the bend. Well, it's kind of hard to see, but that's the top of the handle. So we know that whenever we move this around, the bend will follow because it's a child of the translate. So I'm just going to zero out this tran translate. Now we want the twist. So I'm going to select the banana and hold down space, go to deform, nonlinear again. The reason for picking twist and bend are because they are pretty much the main ones I've used. Everything else, I, at one point in time, I would have tested, but I didn't really find them useful. I think texture deformer was kind of useful. Um, if you, it, it basically uh, displaces an object based on that texture, kind of like what you'd do with a displacement map, but it's doing it in your scene. So if you want some deformation of, of something rather than doing it in render time, then you could use that, I suppose. So let's go add the twist. Right. Okay. So with the twist, um, it has similar functions to the bend. I'm just going to move it into our translate group. Uh, so let's click on the input. And we have a start angle and end angle. So at the moment they're both on zero. But one, um, one affects the other. So what I mean by that is if I let's say frame 12 key selected and let's go to frame 24 do 360 so let's see what let's um let's keyframe that again so you see when we get to 24 then we're just left with that mess but in this scenario what we want is the banana to do a 360 spin on the spot like that's such a cartoony thing that you see a lot. Well, I remember seeing a lot in like silly fruit juice commercials, that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do is, if you notice, so from uh, frame 12 to 24, the start angle goes from zero to 360. So it's saying our start um, rotator goes up to 360. So now what we need to do to get this 360 spin, we need to change the end angle, but there needs to be a delay in order to get this um, looking like a spin animation. So what I've done is a few frames after 12. So I've, I've decided, okay, 18, I've keyframed the end angle. And then I'm going to skip ahead to, let's say 28. Put 360 down and you will notice now that these are both on 360, the banana is in perfect condition. And if I slowly backtrack, you'll see we have this beautiful spinning banana twist animation. And you can actually see if you if you look at the bottom, our star angle, you can actually see it visually, this pie shape moving. And then you can see as well on the top, our end, end angle, you can see the delay so you can see if they're they're matching. You kind of gauge the delay there. But I think that looks pretty pretty funky. And now another little quick lazy way to get a bit more animation would be add a jiggle deformer. So into form and jiggle deformer. So I select the banana, and you can now see we have another input. So we're, we're adding up all these inputs here. So I'm going to open up the attribute editor and go to jiggle two. Let's just um, play this back just to see how crazy it is. <laughs> yeah. 
that's not great, but you know, it's plausible, plausible. Okay, so I'm gonna reduce this jiggle weight and hopefully, yep. You see that? It's so subtle, but it adds that sort of cartoony jiggle. You know, you could use this for uh, character muscles, um, although you would probably add muscles and then do a simulation or something. But this is kind of like a cheap, dirty way of trying to do that. I have actually seen, uh, I've worked with someone who did so fake muscle ripples. They actually just used, rather than trying to do any jiggle deformers or build muscles, I'm pretty sure they used a non-linear deformer like a, like a wave or wrinkle, I don't know, something like that. And they just animated it across across uh, the animal's skin. And, you know, the fact that to do that took 40 minutes or 30 minutes to test and then render, like, saved so much time. Anyway, there we go. I think that's good enough. It's just a nice bit of bounce that's been added to it as well that really adds some life to it really easily. Okay, let's um, let's add some bend as well. Actually, I need to add in the... Um, where's my render camera? I did add a render camera in the scene, so I'm just gonna check what that is. So we know I might as well animate through the camera. Okay, so I'm gonna just add some quick keyframes. So where does it... Um, so let's say it's just a one second jump. So on frame 24, I've got this translate underscore group selected. And in order to keyframe all the translates, I pressed, I held down shift and pressed W on my keyboard. I'm gonna go back to frame 12 and just vaguely place the banana somewhere up. So that would be the mid frame and then I'm gonna zero the Y and then move it back and press shift and W so we can see the banana goes up and down. Amazing. In fact, I think that's too far away there. Okay, now we're gonna answer bend. So you'll start to see how cartoony this looks. Ah, oh, we can't do it here. I thought, I think you have to go to bend and then inputs if you want to do the middle mouse drag thing. Oops. There we go. So there could actually be anticipation as well before. But let's just keyframe that on zero and then when it goes up to 12, And then to 24. So let's, let's go back. So you see, starts in the neutral pose, everything zeroed out apart from the trend, trans, ugh, the translate. And then we bend and then back down for the spin. And then we get that wacky spin effect. And then the jiggle at the end. So that's pretty cool, and that's that's taken no time. In fact, it would have been faster if I hadn't been recording this for you. Okay, great. So let's see if, let's just watch that through actually, just to check. So because there's this is so simple and non-CPU heavy, I'm able to just watch it back even, even with the jiggle. So yeah, that's pretty cool. What I've also done is I did also set up a shader, so I'm just gonna apply that. Um, you could add more um, deformers on the, on the side as well. I will mention another thing that's very important. If you are doing this type of rigging, this very basic type of rigging, these bend deformers, um, if you go to edit, if you're trying to clean up your scene and you go to delete all by type and history, it's going to delete all of them. 
So that's something to be aware of. So once you've done this to your object, if you need to remove any history, then you, you want to go to delete by type and go to non-deformer history. Otherwise, yeah, you would you'd mess up your scene. Right, let's apply a shader. So I made a shader and I'll render it and then just show you, um, show you what it looks like. It's not, it's not particularly mind blowing shader, but you know, it looks like banana. So this is the texture that came with the free pack, but I did some extra things. So there's subsurface. So this is um, all the colors coming from the subsurface scattering. And then the specular looks like this. There is also a bump in it. I will quickly show you the shader. Um, if you did want to download the scene, either from the link or by signing up to the Patreon, then you would obviously get the shader and the, the fixed model as well. Because like, like I said earlier in the video, there is um, there's an issue with the normals of the model. But just to quickly show you, this is not um, a look dev shader uh, tutorial, but what I did was I got the, where is it, what am I looking at? The banana, I converted them to TXs. So I've got the banana color that is going into uh, subsurface um, color. And then I changed the radius to be a darker yellow, left it on a scale of one. And what else? Then I made, oh yeah, I went into Photoshop because there was only one texture that came with this um, free download. So I just made a grayscale and I took it out of there and I plugged it into a color correct and then the color correct goes into the specular roughness. And then I also plugged it into the bump, but you'll notice we have this extra thing going on here. I put in an AI clamp and the reason being is because I was actually getting some really odd, um, what's the word, the fireflies, they're like light specks, like white dots. And I believe it's coming from the texture because I just downloaded this and uh, just started plugging things in. So it was quite unusual to get that, but I plugged in the AI clamp and that seem, seemed to resolve the situation. And there's a bit of bump. If I look in the bump, it's 0 0.3. So yeah, I'm only using two textures. So one there, this bump, which is TX and color correct, color correct. There we go. So yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to render this now just so you can see what the final result is and then we'll take it from there. Okay, so this is how the end render looked. I did change the camera angle. It's pretty interesting. I mean, for the amount of time it took, I mean, that's pretty good, I would say. As in, we've actually got some animation, we've got the twist, we've got the, the bend for you could use a bend for the pre, I forgot the word for it, like pre-meditation, um, the preempt for the jump and then the rotate. And then you've got the jiggle just to add a bit of um, spring to it. Or you could animate that with the, with the twist as well if you went over. So what I mean by that is if I go back in the scene, go to the, go to the bend. I'm not, I'm not proper animator like there are people that just do it day in day out um but if you want the like the jiggle that we've faked with that jiggle deformer what you could also do is you could manually add it so with this start and end angle what you would do is you would probably go to you would go slightly higher like 365 and then 365 for the end angle and then back uh, back down so you would go to like three five eight and then for the other one and then move along a few more frames and then go to 360 so you would overshoot so rather than three 360 then you get 365 then back down three uh three five eight and then a few frames more, 360, if that makes any sense. I'm not gonna demonstrate that now because I'm not not pro animator, but that's something to consider with all of these. So you would do the same with the bend deformer as well, like over overextend and then have add in the bounce. But for this example, I've just put the basic keyframes in 
for that and then just added the jiggle deformer as a as a quick cheat as well overall i think the the result was pretty good so as i said before if you do want access to the scene i'll put it in the comments or description and i will probably just upload this as well for patrons as well but i hope that was of some use as well and feel free to leave a comment about anything you liked or any other requests cheers mm -hmm.